In this video, we're going to discuss probability trees, which are also known as decision trees. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So what is a decision tree? A decision tree is a map of the possible outcomes of a series of related choices. It allows an individual or organization to weigh possible actions against one another based on their cost, probabilities, and benefits. Effectively, a decision tree is a very useful decision-making tool that is quite simple to execute. So let's go ahead and construct a very basic decision tree on a hypothetical example. So in this hypothetical example, let's imagine that you have a decision about whether or not to go to work. So we start with what we call as our decision node. And at this point, you have a decision to either go to work or alternatively not go to work. Now at the point where we are at work, we call this a chance node because there's two there in this hypothetical example, there are two possible outcomes. If you go to work, you either are going to keep your job or you're going to lose your job. Maybe you had a bad day and you lost your job. Alternatively, at this chance node, which is not work, you have a possible outcomes of two here. We're either going to keep our job or we're going to lose our job. So in this very simple example, we have our decision tree constructed properly. We have our, what we refer to as our chant, our decision node, and then we have two chance nodes. So we're not done constructing our decision tree because we haven't filled in any kind of probabilities of occurrence. So we're just going to make up these probabilities. Let's say there's an 80% chance that you go to work. So what we're going to say is the probability you go to work is equal to 0 0.80. So what is what does that mean that the probability that you don't go to work? Well, the probability that you don't go to work is equal probability of not work. is equal to one minus the probability that you work, which is equal to one minus 0 0.80, which is equal to 0 0.20. So effectively, the probability that you don't go to work is equal to 0 0.20. Note that the probabilities of 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 sum to one. So at every decision point, whether it be the decision node or the chance node, the sum of the probabilities across the branches must add up to one. So just to re-emphasize this, 0 0.80 plus 0 0.20 is equal to one. Now we can move on to our chance nodes here. So let's just start with our chance node of when we go to work. So when we go to work, there's a probability that we're going to keep our job and a probability that we're not gonna keep our job. So let's just say if you go to work, the probability that you keep your job is 90%. Well, that means that the probability that you lose your job is equal to one minus the probability that you lose your job, which is equal to 0 0.1. Again, the probability must add up to one. From there, if we don't go to work, let's say the probability that you keep your job is 0 0.25, which means one minus 0 0.25 is equal to 0 0.75. So there's a 75% chance that you lose your job if you don't go to work. And from there, we have a relatively well-constructed probability tree. Now, we can do a couple of interesting things with decision trees to find out the probabilities of each event occurring. So if we want to find out the probability that we keep our job, given we went to work, all we do is we take the probabilities and we multiply across the branches. So 0 0.8 times 0 0.9 is 0 0.72, 0 0.8 times 0 0.1, Zero point two 
times 0 0.25. which means that 0 0.2 times 0 0.75 is equal to 0 0.15. Now, interestingly, if we take the sum of the products of all the probabilities multiplied across their branches, what we get is a sum of one. So 0 0.72 plus 0 0.8 is 0 0.8 plus 0 0.05 is 0 0.85 plus 0 0.15 gives us a sum of one. So the the sum of the probabilities multiplied across the branches must add up to one. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.